Hello and welcome to this video for Excel Chapter 4 Mid-Level Exercise Number 1. We're going to begin today here with page 658 in your textbook, page 658. I'll read the information as you're turning there. So, uh, Crafton's Pet Supplies. You are the inventory manager for Crafton's Pet Supplies. You are currently performing analysis or to be determine inventory levels as well as the total value of the inventory on hand. Your last steps will be to check the report for duplicate entries and format for printing. <clears throat> so, we're going to get started here with step A, which is to open up this file, Excel 4, mid-level 1, inventory, and we're going to save it here. Of course, checking that we're saving it to the correct folder. I'm going to save it to this one. You're going to save it to your flash drive. And we're going to add underscore your last name and your first name. <clears throat> so those two. And that's step A. Then it says we need to freeze the pane so that the column labels do not scroll off screen. So basically we want to freeze the top row here. So I'm going to go to the View tab. I'm going to go over to the Freeze Panes um, button here in the Window group. And I'm going to choose Freeze Top Row. And then you can scroll just a little bit to check. And yes, um, it works just fine like that. It says we need to convert the data to a table and name the table Inventory 2018. So um, we're going to go to the insert tab and then you're going to select table from the tables group and it should automatically um, select all the data so you can see I have cell A1 through G79 my table has headers we have all that um, we're going to click OK you can see now that it switched it over to a table we have our different headers and of course they have their names as well that we need all right, then step D, it says, or excuse me, step C, um, we still need to finish that, convert the data to a table and name the table. So up here under file, we have table name as table one right now. We're going to switch it to inventory 2018, no spaces. Inventory 2018. I'm going to push enter. That way I know it actually switched that name over. And now we're moving on to step D. Step D, it says apply table style medium three to the table. So I'm going to come over here, click the more button, go down to medium because it did say medium. And of course we have the different ones over here. Remember you can't hover over them and we're going for number three. So it should be this one right here. Table style medium three. <coughs> and that switches over. That's step D. Alright step E it says sort the table by warehouse A to Z. So um, let me just click one so we don't have all the cells selected. So I go over here to the arrow next to warehouse. And of course, we can choose sort A to Z for warehouse. <coughs> and then, of course, you can come over here um, and then department. Now, you notice each time if you switch it like this, um, it ignores what you did for the other one. So um, I'm going to actually show you a different way here. Um, that we have done before. I go to the Home tab. I go to Sort and Filter in the Editing group. And we're going to choose Custom Sort. And so we're actually going to choose um, first level here as Warehouse. And of course A to Z. And then we're going to add a new level. So then by Department it said. And that is still A to Z. And then by Unit Price. So I do Add Level unit price so those three and this one is smallest to largest so A to Z A to Z just like those of course don't forget there's these options here um, if we need to mess with them but we don't have to right now click OK it says create a custom sort order for a department we're gonna ignore that part here um, and jump to step F so step F, it says remove the duplicate records from the table. So I have to go to the Design tab under Table Tools. And then I'm going over here to the Tools group and Remove Duplicates. And it should get rid of, you click that button first, um, and after you click OK, it should get rid of one duplicate. So it says one was found and removed. And then there's 77 unique values. I'm going to click OK. And then we're going to continue on here. So step G, it says create an unqualified structured reference in column G. So over here inventory value column G to determine the value of the inventory on hand. So and apply account number formatting. 
to count the inventory on hand, so inventory value basically, um, what we're going to do is we have to multiply the unit price, so right here, and the amount on hand. So I'm going to put the equal sign because we're starting a formula. It says first we multiply unit price, so click on that, and this will come up. And then I hold down shift and push 8 for an asterisk, and then amount on hand, and I click right here. So those things right here. I'm going to push enter. And then uh, you can see here um, I do need to apply count number formatting, uh, which we'll see if it applies it to the whole thing. It looks like I'm going to have to select all the cells. So you're going to have to select all the cells in this column with the numbers here. So down to 78. I'll scroll back up. And then you're clicking the dollar sign up here in the number group counting number format. All right, we finished with step G. We're about halfway there. It says, step H, apply a total row to the inventory 2008 table. So if I go to the design tab, you can see here table style options. And one of those options is a total row. So I'm going to click on total row. Go down here to the bottom. And then uh, it shows here for inventory value it did create the number here um, it says to set it to sum so if I'm gonna click and it looks like it's already there yeah so subtotal sum um, so you shouldn't have to switch it um, if it does it if it shows up as something else then you need to or you made the formula wrong one of the two and then it says for the amount on hand one so click over here that's column E we need to set it to average so I click the arrow put it to average and of course it says format the results to display with two decimal points so I'm gonna to go to the home tab and of course we want to reduce how many decimals there are so decrease decimal that's in the number group <coughs> to just two all right that was step H now we're moving on to step I step I states uh, we need to create a new conditional formatting rule that displays any inventory value for food and health department with a value of 30,000 or more as red accent to fill color. And there'll be two qualifying entries. So what we're going to do, um, one we can do this, and we're going to do it like this, is you, of course, you can see here where it says food and health, and you want to select the cells in the inventory value column. So I'm starting, oh, excuse me, <laughs> wow, starting here in uh, row 7. I click, hold down, and go down through 11. And then we just scroll down a little bit more till we find the next food and health, which is here in row 37. Then I hold down control and click. So I am selecting another row. You can see this 37 went darker when I did that. And then I'm going to scroll down more for the next food and health. Of course, holding down control, I click and select. And there those four are. And then I go down some more and food and health and I click and select again so I selected those and you can see um, those rows are darker so that's one way I can tell on um, that they're selected then let's go up to conditional formatting we're gonna choose highlight cell rules and we're gonna select greater than and you're gonna go in here and I would just select this right here and change it to 30,000 so three zero comma zero 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 decimal zero zero and of course light red fill with dark red text and it says there should be two that go over 30,000 so I can see there's one right up here near the top in row 11 and then I have one down here in row 52 that is dark so that works out all right that was step I now let's go to step J it says ensure the warehouse information is not broken up between pages so add a page break to make sure each warehouse prints on its own consecutive page so you can see uh, all these different ones here Memphis Denver um, so we're gonna split them up so I'm gonna go right here to this one right here where Denver and Memphis ends I'm gonna go to page layout and there's breaks so I'm gonna put insert page break and then I'm gonna come down here to the next one so well actually let's do this here we can change our view to make sure I'm going to click OK just to check it. Yes, it's true. It'll unfreeze our panes um, when we do this. 
All right, so you can see um, it did split it up for us the proper way. So I'm going to push undo and go back to where we were. So the page break should still be there, it looks like. And then I'm going to go down here to the next one, so the first row of the next warehouse. And I'm doing breaks, insert page break, and then um, I need to go down here to where San Diego starts. And then breaks, page break again. And that's all the warehouses, so um, that should be set up properly. Then it says we want to set it to um, landscape orientation. So we're going to go up here to orientation. We're switching it to landscape because you'll notice um, when I looked at it earlier, I unfroze those panes. It didn't completely fit on the page. So we step K. Uh, it says to set the worksheet to landscape orientation. We just did that. And repeat row one labels on all pages. Now the way we can do this is that we go to the page layout tab. And then we go here to page setup group. And we're going to click on the dialog box launcher. We're going to go over to the Sheet tab. So you got Page, Margins, Header, Footer, Sheet. And then we're going to select. Right here, you can see I already have it selected. Um, but basically, you push this button here, and then you make sure you select this row. So if you click on it once, it'll select it. And then I can go back up here. And then you can also do a Print Preview, which is what it says to do um, for the next step. So let's go and do Print Preview. And you're going to see, if you did this correctly, um, we have, of course, our red formatting for the food and health if it went over 30,000. And then it's split up by warehouses. You'll notice this top row is copied here, the label. And it's only three pages because um, we did it properly in making sure we had um, that amount right there. Then step M, it says we're going to insert a footer. So we're going to go back here. So I'm going to click the back arrow. I'm going to do the same thing, page setup, dialog box launcher. Let's go to the header and footer tab, and then custom footer. And of course, we're doing what we usually do. We put our name in the left side. We put the sheet name in the center. So we click on the sheet name code. And then, of course, right section, um, we put the file name code over there. I'm going to click OK. And then step N is save and close your file. So I'm going to save it. And I'll just scroll through this slowly so you can see what it looks like. Or actually, you know what? Let's just do a page preview or print preview so you can see it. Yes, show the print preview. So, of course, you can see the header and footer there. Or, excuse me, the footer. Um, and then we have our information. And then um, this is how it should look at the end. So make sure you save it, make sure it's on your flash drive, and then of course submit it to me as you've been instructed. And that is class how you complete Excel Chapter 4 Mid-Level Exercise Number 1.